the slash 22, the inverse, right? 252 minus 255 is 3. See what I'm doing? Good. All right. I, am I done with... Well, no, I'm not done. Okay, followed after this inverse mask is the area in which you are. And I said we are going to work with a single area OSPF, so it's area zero. Area, we're working with single area OSPF, area zero. Everybody get the correction on the first one? It is slash 8, so it's 255000, zero, zero, zero. the inverse of which is 0, 255, 255, 255. And I had it wrong. Okay? Here's the subnet mask for slash 8. It is 255000. Zero, zero, zero. So the inverse of it is 0, 255, 255, 255. See it? Good. All right. So I am, I am done with router, router A. Yes. We're working with a single area OSPF, so they're both area zero. Okay. What do I do on my next router? I'm on router B. Row one. Row one, tell me on router B what networks I advertise and how. Okay, just louder. Excellent. Okay, so I'm on router B. I say network 131.1. And then, did you say zero? This is row one. Zero. What's my subnet mask if I had to write it down of a slash 14? 255 is 8. 8 and what is 14? 6. Thank you. So 6 would be what? Two five two. Right? Zero zero. The inverse of that would be two five five minus two five two. Excellent. Does everybody get that? Yeah? Okay. So zero three two five five two five five. What other networks? Row one. Uh, okay, one seventy-two, sixteen, one zero, zero. That's eight. We're looking at twenty-two, zero, sixteen. Do we understand it? Okay, what I'm doing is looking at 22, okay, the inverse. So what is the submit mask? 255, that's 8. Remember that this CIDR gives me the number of 1s, right? All right, so that's 255, that's 8. What's the next one? Okay, that's what? 16. Therefore, the inverse of this is 0, 0, I'm subtracting 255, 3, 2, 5. Do we understand it? Practice with that, okay? So, I have that. Do I need to advertise any other networks? B just said I know how to get here and here. Is that all B knows? What else, then? Very good. 16. What? 
Who said that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right? Two five five two five five two five five two five two. The inverse of it is three. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna go to row four. You are now advertising all the networks that C knows about. So, pardon me, yes, uh, thanks James, you're covering me every time. Again, this is followed with area zero each time specifying that this is the area it belongs to. Thank you. Okay, so last row, advertise, uh, tell me what C will do. Yep, that's it. Dot zero. Excellent. So, go ahead, Michael. With the submit pass? No, just tell me what network first. Oh, what network first? Yeah. Uh, oh. Excellent. And submit mask is? Inverse of this? Oh, the inverse of mm -hmm. is? There you go. What is it? 0.0.1.255. Zero zero there you go. Excellent. Everybody hear that? Is that the only network I need to advertise? Row 4? So. Okay. You don't think so because I also know about? What else do I know about? Look at C. Huh? Excellent. So right now you've only advertised 192. You also need to advertise? 16. Excellent. 16. Right? Yep. So looking at this, I hope everybody can glean this much that A, B, and C need to advertise the directly connected routes to others. In this case, A knows about those two routes, B knows about three routes, and C knows about two routes. So the, the difference here is that OSPF advertises by adding a process ID that's new to us. And the process ID is nothing more than saying, this is my instance of OSPF. Can I have many different process IDs and still communicate across my network? Yes. With OSPF, I can. Right? So. You can have OSPF1 and then router B can have router OSPF2 and so on and they can still converge. The next thing that's important here is that I advertise the network now no longer just the network because this is a class less so it also needs the subnet mask. Right? And that's the reason it can work with classless routing. And then at the end of that I specify what area I belong to because we can have multiple areas. That in a nutshell is OSPF as far as configuring it. Now pay attention here, how are they going to converge? Here's what happens. Router A, Router B, and Router C create LSAs, link state advertisements. They, they study the entire topology, right? So Router A, B, and C send hellos to each other. So Joel, you router B and I'm router A. I send you, hello Joel, I am router A and I can, my router ID is, and I'll take my lowest router ID, my 10, and say, my router ID is 10. Joel comes in and says, hello Bell, my router ID, the lowest one, is 131. I'm literally looking at the numbers in this case. And then Kyle comes in and says, okay, routers A and B, well, no, it can't see me yet. It says router B. That's, um, you can only talk to Joel and say, hey, my router ID is 16. Based on those router IDs, we are then going to elect a DR, a designated router. Based on the router IDs, we're going to elect a DR, a designated router. In this case, I will win and become the DR because I'm a 10 dot. 
Looks like Kyle is going to be the BDR, the backup designated router. And then Joel is going to be the druther. That's what it's called. DR other. The druther. Alright? DR, BDR, and druther. Now why would I do that? Because I want to reduce the processing time and expense and rather than all routers talking to one another the routers any effort to just talk to the DR okay they're not going to talk to everyone they're just going to send LSAs and updates and hellos to the DR only the BDR is just sitting there it sees the traffic going it will ignore it as long as it gets a heartbeat from the DR you following me so far these hello packets now when the hello packet stops the BD BDR does not hear from the DR within a specified period of time the time is specified by the administrator then the BDR says uh oh the DR is dead I must be the new DR it comes up says folks listen up I am the new DR the B you know the the DR is gone and then Joe will come up and say, I am the new BDR, and now another router that has a, uh, the next router ID will come up and say, okay, then I am the new Druther. Now, to allow routers to pick the DR and BDR based on router IP addresses or IDs would be the worst thing that can happen to your network. And oftentimes, that's how most of us make money because people hire you know employees that come in and truly do not understand any of the algorithms used in path determination and those algorithms so they mess up their entire network things were working now they're not so they call you up and the first thing you see is that their DR the designated router is somewhere in their off-site which is a hub and spoke and the router that should be the DR is somewhere and Milwaukee is the brother. So what do you do? You start by teaching them how to set priorities. You do not want IDs to win. Rather than that, you want to go ahead and assign priorities. Okay? The lowest priority will win. The lowest priority will win. And there's obviously numbers with priority. A priority of zero, <coughs> if I don't want Joel to be the DR because of his location, then I will give Joel an I, in a priority ID of zero. That says, hey, do not take part in the election. A priority of one means the lowest priority, therefore, elect as the DR. And that's how I want to elect my DR and BDR. That's kind of like what we used to have with the domain controllers, right? The active and then the backup and, and, and so on. Does that make sense to everybody? So the lowest priority is the DR. The lowest priority will then become the designated router. Except zero. Except zero. Except zero. zero means don't take ignore. ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, exclude. Is that making sense on OSPF? So are there 